there is a topic of conversation that is really hot right now. It's not going away, at least until a definitive word is given by Dan Mullen, and that is whether Dan Mullen's going to leave for the NFL or not. So Freddie asked about this, but a lot of you asked about it. I'm just going to use Freddie. He says, how legitimate do you think the smoke is around Dan Mullen going to the NFL? I think it's legitimate, Freddie. Now, uh, let's compartmentalize this. So let's ask ourselves, independent of the NFL, independent of whether he's going to get a, an actual offer or not, let's ask ourselves this. Do you and I think Dan Mullen would be willing to go to the NFL? I think the answer is yes. That's no different than a lot of coaches. A lot of coaches would take the offer if given. Most of them never get an offer. It's really hard to get one of those jobs. There are only 32 of them at any given time. Now, here is the second and I think more interesting question that you could ask. Compartment number two includes this question. Is he actively looking to get to the NFL? Is he actively looking to leave Florida? I think the answer there is also yes. I've heard this for a while now. I don't know that this is even the first year, uh, but I can assure you, as far as I know, yeah, I think that's been happening for a few months now. I think he's been setting that up and been angling towards that for a few months. Again, I have no inside information as to whether he's going to get an offer. I mean, no one does. But most people who tell you they do are lying to you. So that's an NFL front office's decision ultimately. But I think you will have news and be sure to follow real Twitter accounts, people, not fake ones. That fake D. Orlando Ledbetter had you guys, uh, hmm, some of you look foolish the other day. And by you, I mean a lot of national media outlets that ran with it. So um, Falcon's interview that was tweeted out, I thought that was fake, uh, and it was. But having said that, that doesn't mean he couldn't interview with the Falcons. It doesn't mean he hadn't already. You never know what's happened. A lot of this stuff could happen via Zoom. So I think we'll hear about that. And I also think that uh, before this comes to an end, there's going to be at least one serious run made by an organization at Dan Mullen. That's my personal thought. I have no clue if he ends up taking a job. I have no clue if he ends up getting offered a job. But what does it mean? That's really because we don't care about the NFL on this particular podcast. We're talking about college football and right now the University of Florida. What does it mean? Well, I'll tell you this first off. If I were one of you guys, if I were a Florida fan and I were watching this, there would be rapidly approaching a point where it was no return. So I guess you'd call it the point of no return. And that point of no return for me would be where this flirtation with the NFL and this longing to be in the NFL has uh, become so publicly known that I wish he'd just go ahead and go. I'm, I'm rooting for him to get the job, in other words. I don't know if you guys have reached that point yet, but what you're thinking there is obviously twofold. Number one, yeah, you want a guy that's fully dialed into your job. Yes, you want that. But number two, the lifeblood of this whole thing, the whole thing that makes the operation go is recruiting. And the one impediment, and it's a mild impediment, uh, relatively speaking, it's a mild impediment that Dan Mullen in Florida have had is the inability to recruit at a truly elite level. Now, having said that, when I say relative, man, 95% of the sport would love to recruit like Florida does. So they certainly haven't been poor. It's, it's normally explained to you as either you're great or you're terrible. Well, that's, that's not the case with Florida. They've been good to very good in recruiting. However, that's been the gripe. The gripe is, well, we're going to have to out-execute and out-coach folks on game day uh, like Georgia if we play Alabama like Alabama because we're not quite going to match their roster. And that's okay. You did it with Georgia this year. You competed really hard with Alabama this year. You won the East. Fill in the blank. I mean, you did a lot of things this year. Uh, but now, if you already were one step behind there and opposing staffs can go out on the recruiting trail and just take web articles, newspaper clippings, tweets that confirm, hey, your head coach really doesn't even want to be there at Florida, and they can put it in the, in the face of a mom or a kid or a dad or an uncle or an aunt and say, I'm going to be where I'm going to be. I'm, I'm Kirby Smart. I'm going to be at Georgia. I'm Shane Beamer. I'm going to be at South Carolina. However... I don't know that this Dan Mullen guy is going to be there that much longer. And uh, if you want evidence, here it is. Don't take my word for it. He's already tried to get out of there. That becomes a problem if you let it. And unfortunately, there seems to be no quiet way to go about anything anymore. Uh, Dan Mullen, it doesn't appear, can quietly shop his name to NFL teams. It gets out. It's just too many guys covering and girls covering the sport, especially that part of it, the coaching search part of it on both sides, NFL and college. Just too many people uh, too, too many folks willing to talk uh, that have information. And so it really doesn't stay quiet. It's the same way that Texas had their hand forced when they went after Urban Meyer and it didn't stay private. You know, had they gone after Urban Meyer, he turned him down, but that never got out. I think Tom Herman probably still be the head coach at Texas right now, but it did get out. And so they had to look themselves in the mirror at Texas. I think given the circumstances, they made the right call. And that call was to say, all right, 
well, it's obvious that we want out of this marriage with Tom Herman, and everyone knows it. So we went after our dream candidate. We got turned down. But that doesn't mean we're going to turn around and say, all right, Tom, I guess it's till death do us part. That's not, they reach their own point of no return, is my point. And so they went and said, who's next? And Steve Sarkeesian is who they went and got. So once they realized they had crossed that threshold, line in the sand, point of no return, however you want to deem it, they made a move. So I'm not saying they're there at Florida or anything like that. I'm just saying if I were a fan of the Florida Gators, that would probably be my mentality right about now. Now, I can tell you talking to someone, um, man, I don't even know how to describe this person, who is in that world, the hiring, coaching search type world, I was told yesterday That is the domino that a lot of people in the coaching industry and the representation industry, if you will, that's what people are waiting on. People are waiting to see what happens with the Florida job. The Florida job is one of the most coveted jobs in college football. Back in the day, I remember reading a story one time about how Paul Bear Bryant used to talk about the University of Florida. Florida was really nothing at that point. Uh, And he was talking about, well, he was being asked about how powerful Alabama was and how they were running the SEC and running college football. No different than it feels today in a lot of ways. The difference is, Bryant told a reporter, whoever it was, he said, really, um, we're we're all just here hoping that no one ever gets it figured out at Florida. Because if anyone ever gets it figured out at Florida, we're all done. Now, uh, the sport's a little bit different in landscape today, but the point remains, everyone in the coaching world looks at the University of Florida and thinks, man, I'd win huge there. Uh, Dan Mullen is one. He's one big there. But there are other people who know that they can recruit at that elite level and especially could do it with all the talent right there on your doorstep at Florida. You can throw a rock out of the window and hit a signing class that would land in the top 10 just by default. So, um... A lot of people are waiting on that. And I'm not just talking about head coaches. Assistant coaches look at it and say, okay, if Mullen leaves, then they'll have a new head coach. And there are guesses out there as to who it would be. I've got some that, that'll come at the appropriate time, if the time comes. And so um, the assistant coaching world out there, the player personnel world, the analyst world out there, they are all waiting because they'd all want to be on that train. That's why, to be honest with you, when you make that hire, I wouldn't even necessarily worry about how deep a guy's network of contacts is. Just hire the best coach because you'll find whoever you want to find to put on that coaching staff. Now, let me just, before I move on, let me offer up a little anecdote. Uh, Again, anecdote, purely anecdotal here. This is not scientific by any stretch, but anytime I want to gauge how a job is looked at and how a current head coach is looked at, what I do is I'll just reach out to rival fans. Uh, Sometimes if it's in the Southeast, inevitably I will have buddies that are rival fans of any program that we're talking about. And it's no different with Florida. I got a bunch of Georgia buddies. I grew up in Georgia. So I did a little unofficial straw poll yesterday and I was asking them, hey, uh, Dan Mullen at Florida right now versus the idea of Dan Mullen leaving. Which would you rather have? Now, you would think if you live in uh, Montana, for example, you would think, hmm, I watch college football and uh, Georgia got beat by Florida this year. So I bet those Georgia fans are probably excited at the prospect of Dan Mullen leaving. No, they're not. No, 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 no. They look at this year and they, first off, Georgia folks think to themselves, hey, had we started JT Daniels at quarterback earlier, then we would have beaten Florida this year. But uh, even as it stands, they view it as a one-year hiccup, just a little minor setback. Things will return to normalcy in 2021. Uh, There is no changing of the guard or anything like that. What they love is they love the recruiting edge that they know they will probably always enjoy over Dan Mullen at Florida. It would scare them a little bit. See, they, they have confidence they can handle Mullen. They have confidence that Florida under Mullen is a program they'll always be superior to roster wise, that they have that confidence. They don't like the idea of that job being open because folks in Georgia are plenty smart enough to understand, ooh, man, that job's premier. That job, that's a big deal. And that means big-time candidates are going to want it. And if Florida screws around and they end up hiring the right guy, well, that could be big-time trouble for us. You know, they, they had mild concerns when Tennessee was open, but not as nearly as much as they would have with Florida being open. So just keep a little eye on that because I can tell you, The folks in Tallahassee who have a litany of their own problems right now, the folks in Coral Gables, I would guess they probably feel the same way, even though they don't enjoy any leg up on Florida right now. They just look in their own mirror and say, okay, if we ever get it on track, then Mullen's a guy that we feel like we can compete against. We don't want Florida to end up hiring like Steve Spurrier, Urban Meyer 2.0, something like that.